Hello again, Choro Q fans. So, you know, I've uh, introduced this line in my channel now, and I kind of it's kind of my recent thing right now. So, I'm still doing the 164 scale stuff, of course, the realistic ones, but I find these really entertaining. Uh, some pictures in the back. Uh, there were some big model kits of these things put out by Guns, G U N Z E, and Neko Works, N E K O. And, uh, but they're much bigger, you know, much bigger model kits. But I wanted to bring these up because these up here were actually, uh, modified by Ryu Asada, you know, of Hot Wheels fame. Sadly, he passed away, so it's uh, unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, I just thought it'd be nice to share, you know, some of his work outside of Hot Wheels and uh, Matchbox cars. All right. Well, anyways, uh, today's video is uh, me making another mistake online because uh, I don't research stuff. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> because I'm always given the wrong statistics. So I ordered three of these, three more of these Choro cues, and uh, they showed up in the mail, and they do look nice. But here's what happened. So, they're obviously a lot smaller, and my initial reaction is, what the heck? But they weren't overly expensive, so I'm okay with it, I guess, you know. And it turns out that uh, there's a there was a line of these things, although I don't know when these were out, so if you veterans can chime in. Chibiko? Chibiko? I, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But obviously, that's a line of much smaller uh toys here so it looks like off the bat well let's take a closer look here at this one and uh see what how the inner workings of how it, what makes it different or not one thing that is nice about this is it's got a really nice metallic finish so i mean that's die cast quality in my opinion the larger ones uh were just clear plastic and they're painted you know it's just one piece of plastic painted i'm gonna suspect that this is the case with this guy but uh, let's just go over this here. You'll see the chromed plastic wheels. So, rubbery tires again. This one's pretty old. Well, I don't know. It's definitely rubbery, but it's a pretty stiff rubber. I guess this must be meant for traction because they're wind-up uh, spring motors. Let's see here. What's this say on the bottom? All right, 2004 Takara Company. And then one screw. So basically it is built, I think, the same way as the larger one. Just one screw and a tab holding the back section on. But let's just make sure. Yep, yeah, it is one clear piece of plastic. So it's basically the window plastic. And then uh, it looks like they shot silver on top of it. And then they shot the blue on top of that. Maybe this clear coat is blue. And that's why it looks so cool. You know, it has some depth to it. But it's just amazing that they could paint this so well. Like these little, you know, uh, window chrome accents and all that stuff. I mean, I can't imagine a, a U.S. brand of diecast trying to pull this off. I, I just don't know if it, they could do it. <laughs> Granted, almost everything's made in China, but anyways. So, <coughs> all right, so that construction is the same. Yeah, this looks the same too. It's just one tab holding this motor. Ugh, boy, that's a tough tab though. There it goes. Yeah. So it is basically the exact same construction methodology as the first one. And some other company is making the motors. Seikoken? Okay, interesting. Alright. So I actually haven't tested the speed of these, but I'm sure they must move really fast. I'm just going to pull it back a little bit. Yeah, it took off. I bet if I wanted a much further it'd be pretty fast okay so I think I'm still gonna try to do a wheel swap let's let's see what's going on well you know maybe I'll just show you these other ones first this first one here is a sports 800 as you may have seen through the back thing this is meant to hold a coin guys so you put a coin in here and then it does a wheelie it's like a penny racer so this one is a Skyline 2000 GTR KPGC 10, meaning it's one of those Hakosukas, and it says number two on it. This is a Isuzu Billet 1600 GT, 
must be a body code, PR91W, number 28. So we know there's at least 28 of these things. Oh boy, I don't know if I want to collect this smaller scale or the larger scale. It depends on the wheel swaps. I want my things to look uh, modified. It looks like these wheels are all the same amongst these three models, right? So not much variation there. All right, uh, yeah, painted lights front and back. Basically everything is painted. There's no plastic inserts. Although I kind of think if the entire thing is of clear plastic, it might have made sense. Oh, wait a second. I think these headlights are clear plastic. Let's get the flashlight. Yeah. So you can, so those headlights are clear. So that's pretty smart. But not the case on the GTR. It's just painted. What about the blue car? Oh yeah, look at that. That's pretty neat. So the grill and the lights are clear. Well, that's interesting. Alright. See, alright. That was, I think, 15 lumens. Alright. So, let me try a couple different wheels. And so I'm back here. I only ended up swapping two wheels. So I'm just going to quickly, you know, review each of them, along with their 164 scale counterpart. So over here we have a 164 scale Sports 800 by Konami, apparently. Okay. So here's a size comparison. I would actually say these uh, smaller variations are closer to 164 than the original size, which, well, okay. So this one, all the only thing I did was add some black paint wash into the wheels, just to help to bring out the the features. So I don't really love this car that much. I like the blue and all that, but uh, I didn't feel like spending the money to replace the wheels on this guy. So that's it for that one. Let's pull out the next one here. Let's go with the billet. So this billet, I have a Dido branded uh, 1600 GTR here. Let's see how this looks. So the billet wheels uh, come from this box here. It's a CM model. And it's interesting because this brand not, doesn't have staggered wheels all the time. But this set here, this gold set, actually is a bunch of staggered wheels. And when I say staggered, I'm talking about height-wise or diameter-wise. This this front wheel is literally a smaller diameter than this rear wheel. I think the tire thickness might be the same. So that's what uh, works. What's nice is it comes with these uh, pre-paint. You know, all this stuff is pre-painted, including the red caliper and the uh, the brake rotor there. So for this guy, I ended up sacrificing the motor. I clipped off. I clipped out the original axle. And then I just slid through the axle from this CM model brand. And I used uh, 3D printer resin. So if you have this resin in a UV light, it's a relatively quick way to set glue. So it's an experiment, you know. It seemed to work this time around. It's faster, well, it's definitely faster than, say, school glue or an epoxy. And crazy glue... If you mess up, it, it tends to leave that vapor also. If you use too much crazy glue, it tends to whiten the surrounding area because of the gas is being emitted. So I don't know if this is the best way, but it worked on this one. But this is a totally static model now. These wheels don't roll at all because I, I resined the things in place. Mainly because I want to get a little camber action. You know, the whole slammed JDM look, which practicality wise makes no sense because you're running on the inside rim of the wheel right but for a show car it's interesting interesting excuse me my throat is dry the front wheels there don't have too much camber though all right so that's uh this guy here let's put that one back up there and get the next set going now my favorite one is the skyline this is the uh now this 164 is a kyosho brand and it is the same car by Kyosho. And this Kyosho has aftermarket wheels on it also. So let's let this go for a little spin. 
You'll see I added a lot of camber on this one. This is the last one I did, so I was kind of progressing, you know, messing around, experimenting. And the wheels that are on this red skyline now are from this uh, BNDS, the plastic ones. So they don't have any brake rotors, so I don't really mind them being on this little Choro cube because it's not a realistic car to begin with. So if it doesn't have brakes, well, it's, it's okay. Alright, so... Let's see, same same thing I did on this one, I sacrificed the motor. But this one, I didn't use any of the axles at all. There's no axle running through the middle. All I did was I trimmed down the, the wheels, and then again, I used this 3D printing uh, resin, and then I, you know, I have a UV light. You want to wear sunglasses anytime you have a UV light, because that stuff is not good for your eyes. It's not good for your skin, obviously, at least a skin cancer. But in short durations, uh, I'm not too bothered by it. It takes around 10, 20 seconds to harden. Actually, the plastic, this resin will start to harden in like 5 seconds, but to really fully cure it, it wants to uh, be there for like 10 or 11 sec, 10 or 12 seconds. Okay. So it works. You know? Uh, <laughs> this one's really cambered. I like it. It looks so comical. Especially the rear camber. So... But again, that's no, totally static model. These things are locked in place forever now. Alright. So that's it for the comparing to the real cars. I found this nice photo. Someone wrote a little article about these things. And uh, this person was saying that the Chibi... Chib... <laughs> Chibico? I can never remember that. The Chibicos here seem to have better detail than the full-size ones. And I have to agree. I mean, this thing has... Uh, molded in light bulb light bulbs there and then these lights here and yet that one doesn't it's just kind of plain right i feel like this light has more you know detail with the silver here and it's got this clear piece here the windscreen whereas that one doesn't so interesting that these smaller ones maybe have more detail but you know this since you've been making these little toys for like 40 years I think it just depends on the series because this one even though this is around 20 years old as well I think the details on this are pretty great I don't there's nothing lacking in this compared to the little ones in fact this has the the printing of the badges which the little ones do not seem to have the little ones only have taillights but they don't say Nissan Isuzu or anything like that like this so Maybe that article is outdated now. All right. So I think these Chibicos, are, again, they're closer to 164 in their width, I think. Well, you know what? Let's just do one more comparison. We have a true, well, what I believe is a true 164 by Kyosho. Then we have this guy, the Chibiku. Ah, darn it. I don't have the, uh, it's not the same. You know, I think a 510 is a smaller car than a Skyline. So actually, if the, the Datsun 510 is smaller than the Skyline, then yeah, you can get a better idea. The original Choro Qs are way over scale. Maybe they're more like 140th scale or something. Or I'm, nah, 140 maybe is too big. Maybe 150? Maybe they're Hot Wheels scale. You know, 3 inch, random 3 inch sizes. Alright, but the Chibiku, well... That's not as wide either, so maybe that's like 170 as far as the width goes. Hmm. Alright. So back to this again. So it's a tough call. I kind of like the smaller form factor because it can collect more of them with, you know, space is a concern for me. But the, I'm pretty sure the vast variety resides in the larger you know this this size versus that size so I'd like to keep them all the same but who knows it seems like I have like 15 different scales of vehicles now either through purchasing by mistake or just holding to some cars from like 15 20 years ago all right well thanks for watching again and uh, I'll, I'll get some more of these so take care stay tuned